In this video, I'll be reviewing the Epson Perfection V39 II scanner. First, I'll show you the different features of the scanner. We'll check what kind of scan quality it's capable of. We'll also compare it to other scanners in case you're in the market to get one of these. And finally, I'll give you my final opinion on this device. So let's get started. This scanner on the back has a micro USB port and it comes with a cable included in the box. By plugging this cable, you're able to transfer the data, but also to power the scanner. You don't have to connect it to any power source. In the front of the printer, we have four different buttons. These are shortcuts and you're not obligated to use them. When you connect the, the scanner to your computer, you're able to control the scanner with the software or with these buttons, so it's up to you. The scan bed can scan documents of eight and a half inches by 11.7 inches, which is perfect with most documents. If you want to scan a larger document that doesn't fit this scan bed, you can scan it bit by bit. Let's say this over here, then you move it around like this. And on the Epson software that you install on your computer, it's able to stitch automatically every scan to create a very large document. So this is really cool. You're not limited by the size of the scan bed. And if you're scanning a very thick document or let's say a book, this lid over here extends, you see? It extends this way and the scan lid is removable, you see? This way you can simply put whatever on the scan bed and thickness won't be an issue. And the process to attach and remove the scan lid is very easy. You see, in just a few seconds it's there. And another thing that is quite unique to this scanner is that it has a kickstand on the bottom here. You just have to extend it like this and the scanner sits now vertically on your desk. Now it's not very practical to scan in this position and Epson themselves don't encourage you to do so. It may stay in place but sometimes it simply slides down. This feature is mainly to save you space on your desk. So this way you can put it far away and still have some workspace. This printer is compatible with the new Epson ScanSmart software that is extremely easy to use. It has many automatic features that detect what kind of document you have and adjust the settings accordingly. I used many scanners in the past and definitely this software is the easiest to understand. Now let's check the scan quality. I have scanned different types of documents, so let's take a look at them. This is just a plain sheet of paper with some graphics. And if we zoomed in, we can see that there is a lot of details and most important is that the colors are accurate. If I'm looking at the original and I'm looking at my screen, the color reproduction is definitely one of the plus side of the scanner. Then I have scanned a very small picture. It's uh, smaller than four by six. And again, it did a really good job. I know it looks a bit pale, but this is how the picture was originally. And even if I zoom in, I can see very fine details. This document is from a brochure. It's a bit bigger than a four by six picture. And by the way, the scanner was in auto mode, so I didn't touch anything. I just pressed scan and these are the results I got. And finally, this is a combination of three different scans. And thanks to the software, it has stitched them automatically and gave me, gave me this one picture over here. And I think it did a very good job. A small note is that if you're scanning at full resolution with the scanner, a picture, it will take a long time, like about 15 minutes or sometimes more. This is normal, by the way. Every other competitors, other scanners of this price range will take the same amount of time. Just be prepared to wait if you want maximum details. Now, there are three different competitors for this Epson scanner. The first one is the CanoScan Lite. 400, the Canon Scan Lite 300, and hey, I have one of these, so we'll be able to compare them in just a few seconds. And finally, another competitor is actually another Epson scanner. It's the V19 
two. So let's talk about these. So the Canon Lide 400 has the same exact resolution as this Epson. So the scan quality is extremely similar. It also has some buttons on the front, same as this one. The only thing is it doesn't have a, a kickstand, but I don't think it's a, it's a big deal for most people. And price-wise, again, it's very similar with this Epson. I never had the Light 400, so I really cannot speak about it, but spec-wise, they're on par with this Epson. Then we have the Light 300, and as I said, it's just over here, so let's take a look. Size-wise, they're very similar, but the Epson is just a bit smaller. If we place them on one on top of each other, they're not much different. They both have the same scan bed size, okay? But the big difference here is that the Epson is able to scan at a much greater resolution compared to the Light 300. The Light 200 has a maximum optical resolution of 2400 dpi, while this Epson Perfection V39 II has a maximum of 4800 dpi. So if resolution is very important for you, you're scanning artworks, photography, stuff like that, the, the Epson will definitely give you more fine details. Another thing that the Epson has that this, uh, the Canon does not is a removable scan lid. This is fixed in place and if you're scanning big books or stuff like that, well, this may get in the way. Well, here, as you saw, you can simply remove it. And finally, the other competitor to this scanner is the Epson Perfection V19 II, which is selling for cheaper. It has the same exact resolution, which is quite impressive, but it lacks some features. So it doesn't have the feature where if your document is too large and you're scanning it, the scanner will actually stitch every single different scan to create one document. It doesn't have this feature. And you're also not able to scan directly to a cloud service. So these are the two most important features that the V19 II does not have compared to this one. So if you're not gonna use those, well, maybe it's a great option since it can save you a few bucks. So what is my final opinion on this Epson Perfection V39 II? Well, I think it's a great entry-level scanner. If you're planning to scan your artwork, which is painting, pictures, or anything else that requires high resolution, this will do a really good job. Now, sure, there is other options in this market, including the Canon options, but honestly, the software was much more easier to use with the Epson. The learning curve is quite small and in just a few seconds, you'll be able to scan and understand how everything works. The only downside of this printer, well, I think it's the connectivity over here. It's a micro USB port and in 2023, or maybe you're watching this in 2024, 2025, I think this should have been a USB type C. It's much more common. Everybody has USB type C cables and micro USB, I think it's one of the weaker USB port. Usually they break at a quicker pace compared to a USB type C, but only time will tell. Mine didn't broke yet. Another thing that I would love to see in one of these budget scanner is Wi-Fi. Sometimes it's not quite convenient to connect the scanner to your computer. Maybe you prefer keeping the scanner in another room or maybe on another desk and you don't want to bring uh, your computer and the scanner together every time and connect it manually. So this is another feature that I wish will be implemented in the future. So I won't call it a downside by any means because the other competitors are, do not have this feature, but it's something that I wish will be implemented uh, in the future. So this is it. I hope this was useful. If you want to get one of these from Amazon, please check my affiliate links in the description. This helps supporting my channel. And uh, if not, simply write a comment, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.